Good evening, intrepid parents. My name is David Fritch. You're going to meet Mary Dillon in just a moment. We'd like to welcome you to the open house for our team. Um, I got to tell you, being back in school is just the greatest. Um, we have been more than thrilled to see everybody in the room, to be able to talk with everybody in the room. Even if it's only half their face, it's okay. I'm glad that they're here. We are so optimistic about the year. We're gonna keep that running as long as we can. It's gonna be great. Thank you, let's move on. Here's some of the things that we're gonna to talk to you about. We're gonna to talk to you about communications and student goals and what you can do as a parent and where your place fits in, what the kids are doing, what we're doing, all of that. All right, I'd like to introduce you to Mary Dill. Good evening. To echo what David said, we are excited to be back. There's a different energy in the building and we're just thrilled to have everyone back and it's because of our students that that's possible. So thank you for uh, watching. We wanted to get to the nitty gritty of things in a short amount of time. Uh, we've had a lot of questions about extra help. So my extra help runs on Wednesdays after school. Mr. Fritch's runs on Thursday and it begins at 2.40, ends at around 3.15. Students, we ask uh, to, for them to bring a specific goal or a question not to just come. Uh, we'd love for them to kind of advocate for themselves and come with a goal in mind. More nitty gritty stuff. We have different ways that we communicate here in the middle school. We have interim reports and report cards. Our first interim report will be ready around the end of October. October 29th is the date that we've been told that they'll be available on the parent portal and independent campus. And when you look at the interim, you're going to see a grade range, not a definitive grade. Report cards will come out three times a year as well as the interim. And report cards uh, will have letter grades, so more of a committed grade at the end of every trimester. And that first one will come out at the end of December, middle of December, December 17th. This is a sample of what an interim report might look like. You'll see your child's teacher's names with some comments and then an overall grade range. It's really just kind of where we think your child may be at the interim part of the trimester. It's very smooth editing, us uh, switching back and forth. I like that. Uh, in Schoology, you want to be able to check for updates, assignments, links. On the right side of the landing page, you'll see upcoming events. We're going to show you a couple of pages. So this is what your child's uh, Schoology page should look like, and you will see where it says updates. That's where we are going to post our homework, both Ms. Dillon and myself. You will also see in your materials the actual assignments themselves. Sometimes those are quizzes or, uh, or files that we want them to watch. It can be videos. You'll also see those are the individual assignments right there. And finally, on the right-hand side, any items that are due, are get, you're going to see there. All right? Moving on. So David and I have worked together for several year, years now on the same team, and we share the same mission statement. So on Team Intrepid, we look forward to engaging with the world around us, especially during these times. This includes how we interact with peers and teachers and the subjects we're learning. We anticipate the celebration of success, the discovery of new ideas, the collaboration with one another, and that we trust our challenges will be met with support and empathy from everyone around us. We expect to take risks, meet new people, and grow as individuals, both socially and academically. Our keywords engage, interact, anticipate, discover, collaborate, trust, expect, meet, and grow. At this point, what I'd like to do is uh, show you my classroom. There's Mary again, that's my desk. Uh, this is what you, when your kids say they're thinking about a problem, that's what they're looking at. Okay, that tree turns great. Uh, some theater things, but this is generally the room. Mary's going to lead us out right now as we move go down the hallway. Uh, this is what the hallway looks like to the left of my room. There are the bathrooms. There's a water fountain. And we're going to be heading down this direction. The lockers on the right that you see are mostly what our team uses. These are other classrooms. It is a remarkably empty place because everybody's in class right now. So every day your kids walk back and forth between Ms. Dillon's room and mine. And now we are going to enter Ms. Dillon's room. 
So let's start on the left. And we'll go around. We can see all these things. That's the front of her room. There's our screen. Look, more green. There's always green space. And Ms. Dillon is one of the few people that still has a blackboard. I am so jealous of it. She gets to use chalk and wipe it off and everything. All right, so I'm going to talk to you about the responsible learner. We want children to have, to be empowered to have uh, autonomy over what they're doing uh, every day in class. And I'm going to show you what that looks like, both in school and at home, and see how it goes. Let's go. So we have level one and level two skills. You'll notice that the level one skills are all our content. Uh, we're talking about map reading and adding and uh, conjugating and things. The level two skills uh, are more lifelong skills. It's a time management and communication and keeping ourselves organized. Uh, those last, those level two skills are the ones that will go with them all through school. So not only are we teaching them content, but we're trying to teach them how to be good students and how to act for themselves. So let's talk about time management. Uh, in school. So when students arrive in class, they should be on time, their device should be charged, uh, they get right to work in terms of classroom procedures, there's a do now, there's copy homework, there's take out last night's homework, there's all these things that they need to do. And what Ms. Dillon and I both really stress is that in that walk in between our classes, if they have to go to the bathroom, if they must have a drink of water, that's when they do it. But the moment that the, they cross the threshold of our classrooms, they are on the job. I think there's more. Make sure that their assignments are ready and they use their independent time effectively. If they finish a problem, if they finish a paragraph, what do they do in the five minutes while we're waiting for the whole class? Are they gonna to start to run their mouths or are they gonna take out a reading book? Are they gonna study something from yesterday? Are they gonna look ahead? That's what we're trying to foster. What time management looks after school, in other words, when you got them, here's what this is. Um, Help them map out time after school. Not everybody wants to get off the bus, run home, open their books, and do their homework. We got that. Um, so how much do you study each day? When do you do your homework? I have rehearsal, I have practice, I have horseback riding, I have to go see grandma, whatever those things are. Help them map out, I've got an hour block here, I got a half an hour block here, I need dinner, I got this. Help them map that out, and how to organize their time each day. In terms of studying and projects, uh, I was the kind of kid that was the, the, the midnight before, and I'm trying to tell people that's a difficult thing to try. How much are they gonna do each day? If they know something is due next Wednesday, they do 10 minutes a day, that might just be enough to get it done. So we're trying to teach them that kind of thing. Communication, a responsible learner, uh, is answering and asking questions. Those are the bravest people I've ever seen. Mr. French, I don't know what you're talking about. That sounded like Greek. What do you mean, what, what do you mean move the decimal point? Um, they take notes, they're listening carefully. They do a lot of group work in both of our classes. We want them to share ideas, to argue and debate ideas, and that when they are working in a group, they are a productive member of that group, uh, that they're not just working off the work of other people. Organization in terms of assignments, they should have a dedicated section in their notebook for both of our classes. Uh, what we don't want to see is one notebook with ELA and then there's science and then a little French and then some art and then there's the remnants of lunch. Uh, Every player should have a, either a section in their notebook for each subject or a spiral or something like that for that. We should see that their notes are detailed and easy to follow and that they show a train of thought. This applies to every single class in math if you're going to tell me that 3 times 0.4 is uh, 1.2, I want to see how you prove that. That exact same thing works in ELA. If they're making a claim about a character, I believe that this character is a bully. What evidence do you have? They're showing that. And it's a train of thought and supporting their ideas. We want to make sure that Mary is going to do the next slide. <laughs> And in terms of quality of work, we are really encouraging our students to show their work and their thought process, like David mentioned. Uh, questions and answers are always written out. You've heard that responding to questions 
in complete sentences. Everything is well edited as best as they can. There's sophisticated, sophisticated language. We're learning a lot of new vocabulary this year, and we're hopeful that students are applying that to their writing. And of course, that it's their own work, that it's not um, someone else's work. Of course, their own work, and that it's on time. No one is perfect. No one's going to hand in every single assignment right on time. But of course, uh, that's what we're striving for, is to get people to be responsible. So a lot of people ask, how is my role as a parent in the middle school perhaps different from my role in the elementary school? So here's what we'd like you to encourage. In terms of organization, any kind of hard copies that they have, it's either in a folder or it's in their notebook, uh, the desktop, you know, their, their, their iPad desktop should be organized so it's not 8,000 folders everywhere, and some kind of home filing system. Um, when we finish a unit, we may ask them to remove it from their books if they're working in a section or they may have a stack. That's not garbage. Uh, any kind of home filing system works. Again, you can buy the big fancy filing cabinet with a Hemi on it and planes coming out of the back if you want to that's all digital, or you can have a cardboard box under the bed. But please save the information, keep it grouped together. In terms of time management, they do have daily classwork and remote work, make sure that they're, that, that they're still doing that. Uh, help them, ask them if they're studying or they have projects. Again, you can check their Schoology page and see what's coming up on that right hand side. Finally, if they have questions, encourage them to advocate for themselves. Don't take offense, but I'd rather hear from your kids than you. Mr. Fritch, question 23 was kicking me in the head. Um, I don't know how to solve that. Can we go over that tomorrow? That is so powerful for a, for a child to do, for a student to do. They are participating in their own education. I'd like to talk to you a little bit about what the middle school is like. Uh, it is a transition year. In a, let's forget the last two years, right? Regular coming up from the fifth grade to the sixth grade is a big change. They're coming from a small school, from a self-contained classroom in most cases, to here, it's a big school, three schools feed us, they have a different teacher for everything, so it's a big transition year. Considering the last year and a half, it's even more so. What we have seen so far is that people are so happy to be here, to be with each other, they're enjoying working with each other, but it is a big change. Some people get it day one, some people it takes a little time to warm up to it, but so far, we've been really optimistic in seeing everybody really adjusting. If this is your first kid coming through the middle school, we're starting with a little bit of adolescence. So buckle up for that one. Uh, not only do they have to negotiate eight different teachers and eight different classes, and, but they also have to negotiate the social you know, nightmares of the hallways and the recess and all of that. So it'll be interesting. Some people are ready to take on the responsibility, some not. And we will catch them. I'm sure you you are wonderful sixth graders, and you can do sixth grade math, and you can write a fabulous paragraph. We want to know what the kids can do. If they start to struggle a little bit, that's a good thing. We will catch them. I do put an asterisk on that because it will eventually, with some people, need a number of folks to do this, uh, and that's when we're going to need your help. So we may reach out to you at that point and say. Here's what we're struggling with in school. Maybe you can give us some insight. Finally, both of us would like to thank you so much for coming to this virtual open house. And uh, we hope to see you during the year. Please feel free to contact us if you have any questions. Do uh, you have anything to say to the people, Mary? Great. So excited to be yeah. back. And thank you for taking the time to watch. OK. Bye-bye. <laughs>